Hey everybody, it's Will here. Today, we're having a look at my guitar collection. First up is my Helm Custom Guitars Super Strat. This was made for me in 2019 by Tyson Spinney at Helm Custom Guitars. Features an ash body with a beautiful shell pink finish on it. We've got a roasted maple neck, dig that. Almost looks like rosewood, but it's roasted maple, so it's really slick and comfortable. The pink appointments are on there too, it's awesome. Or accents, rather. It has a Danish oil finish on the neck. The neck starts out with kind of a soft V profile and then tapers up to a nice full C. It's not a thin shredder neck by any means. It's got hand-wound pickups by Tyson, uh, two singles there, and a humbucking pickup. I would say the singles are very kind of 60s in nature. It has that scooped mid thing and a lot of brightness, but plenty of output. And then the humbucking pickup is sort of like the T-top that's in my 74 Les Paul Custom. There's also a series parallel switch on that bottom tone control there. And also it's worth noting, it's got Goto hardware as well as the Highwood saddles that I put on there. Great guitar. Um, I have it set up the bar to be able to do like Jeff Beck style floating bar tricks and stuff like that. Here's my other Strat type guitar. This is a Danocaster, more traditional three single coil setup. It's also got an ash body, a one piece maple neck. Just lovely. 6125 frets. This has arcane pickups in it. The body, I believe, is ash. The whole guitar is very light. It's about seven pounds. And as far as when I need strap tones, this is the guitar I grab for the most part, whereas the pink one is a little bit more a Swiss Army knife kind of a thing. This is a 1967 Harmony Bobcat. It's an H15, the two pickup model with uh, just the regular uh, stop bridge there. These Diarmon Golden Tone pickups are awesome. The guitar, I'm not sure what it's made out of. It's got a really nice round neck profile. It's really comfy. And this one was well taken care of, so it plays really well with a really low action. Uh, so I, I keep this one in standard, whereas all the other harmonies tend to get tuned down. That does have newer, slightly better tuners on it. I even have the original case for this one, which is kind of cool. And then we've got... My number one, this is Goldie, the Danocaster Telecaster style guitar. It has an ash body. It has the Buds, B-U-D-Z, Danocaster pickups. One piece maple neck with the soft V profile, similar to the uh, Blackie there. And uh, you gotta love, people ask me all the time, is that finish over finish or, or what? But it's just good, honest play wear. The guitar was aged when I bought it, but not to this degree. You can see in there, Dano Caster. And I had him flip the control plate uh, because I do a lot of volume swells and stuff with the guitar. This guitar is about six, maybe six and a half pounds. It's a really light Telecaster style guitar. And it's my favorite, without question. Just a beauty. And then we'll look at one more here on the couch before I change them up. This is a 59 silver tone made by Harmony, uh, 1421, so it's kind of like a Stratotone. It's all hollow. Again, really light guitar. It has Diermond pickups in it that have the silver casings, which uh, I guess went with the fact that it was the silver tone brand. These were often sold through Sears and other catalog houses, but. Um, it's great. Again, it's like the Bobcat in that it has a really nice round neck profile on it. We'll get a decent look here. I had to put some foam back behind the bridge to stop it from ringing, or by the tailpiece rather. I keep this one tuned down really low. It's uh, tuned usually to like open, open G or open D or maybe even something a little lower than that. But I've used this guitar on some recordings with some friends of mine and it's a great blues axe which I'm very lucky and fortunate to have as part of the collection. All right, let's check out another uh, grouping of guitars here. All right, and now we're getting into some of the, uh, the Gibsons and uh, one other harmony that I'll talk about here soon. 
We'll start with this. This is a 2018, very late in the year, uh, Gibson SG Special P90 Limited Edition. They started it out with these, um, again, as a limited run in this sweet vintage sparkling burgundy color, which is kind of a candy apple red sort of a thing. They also did it in a faded Pelham blue, which is really cool. But it's a reasonably true to spec copy of an early 60s SG Special with the wrap tail in the P90s. The placement of the pickups is a little different than an original, and this one does have a PCB wiring harness, which I hope to change out at some point. It's got a really wide and flat 60, early 60s style neck profile, close in tuners, bound with dots. Um, it's actually one of my main stage guitars. I really find it, it looks and sounds great. I wish the P90s were a little quieter, but that's the nature of the beast when dealing with these. Okay, uh, this is one of my favorite guitars. This is, uh, along with the Tele, if I could only have two, it would probably be the Tele in this. This is my Gibson Rusty Anderson 335. Uh, it's number 186 of 250. They made these in 2013 and 2014, and they're basically a copy of Rusty Anderson's 59 335 Blonde. This particular one has some lovely figuring on it. Some of them were pretty plain, and some of them have pretty over-the-top figuring, but this one's a nice mix of the two. It's got Gibson custom buckers in it. Uh, it's all original aside from I had Tyson Spinney put a new nut on it, and we, I think I changed the knobs just to some aged ones. It's got a great 59 style neck profile with sort of a D taper to it. Whole guitar is fairly light for a 335, about eight pounds. It's got the long pit guard on it, which is cool. And the sort of aged looking hardware, which I love. And it plays great. Uh, it took me a long time to get a hold of a great blonde 335 with the neck profile that I wanted, and I'm glad I waited and got this one. It's a very special guitar. I kind of tend to save it for special occasions as far as gigging with it, but uh, it does come out, it's come out to some pretty uh, important shows over the years. Here's one other blondie. This is uh, the one other Harmony Electric I have. It's a 63 Harmony H71 Meteor in blonde. It's all original, as far as I know, including the Diarmond, I guess they call these the mustache pickups. And this is a really well-matched set of pickups. I know some of these guitars, it's like you'll get one pickup that sounds great and the other pickup is kind of anemic. But this is a really good pair in this guitar. And it's not common to see these in blonde, so I got this from a good buddy, Devin Fox, and uh, happy to have it. It was the first Harmony guitar that I ever acquired. And then another 63 guitar. This is a Gibson SG Standard. Player's grade. Uh, it's been totally refinished in black. You can see maybe some uh, evidence where it's had uh, like different tail pieces on it at one time. Uh, refinished in black. It has uh, late 60s, early 70s Gibson Clusons on it. Duncan 59s for pickups and uh, newer Goto hardware. The thing I like about this guitar is that it has that really round 63, 64 style neck profile. It's not the slimmer profile like that guitar. It's more like the neck on the 335 or some of my Les Pauls. Very, very comfortable. Uh, great bottleneck guitar. Also just great for playing anything you throw at it really, but um, I do use it a lot for slide. The refin is nitro, or I should say it's not nitro, it's actually, it's like poly or something because there's no checking or anything, but it was well done. Pickups again, Duncan 59s, Goto hardware, and just kind of random pots. So there's nothing original about it, but it's a great guitar to have as part of the collection. All right, let's load up. We've got, I think, a few Les Pauls coming next. All right, and here's a look at my Les Pauls. This first one is a pretty cool guitar. This is a 2016 Les Paul CM. It's a thin-bodied Les Paul. We'll try to... So you can see there, it's kind of like the old Les Paul lights from the 90s. When I got this guitar, it was flat black, matte finish, 
and uh, not the most attractive looking guitar in the world, but I bought it as a project to have it refinished, and that's what I had done. So this is sort of like Pelham Blue. It's not quite that color, but uh, it's a cool blue flake. I don't, I mean, you might be able to see it there. It's got a wrap around a Gibson 61 humbucking. It has a little wider neck, which I'm still getting used to. And it has the uh, titanium nut had the chrome cover put on there and the headstock is gloss now. This one also had uh, robot tuners and those went immediately. But this is a fun guitar. I'm still, like I say, it's, I just got it back. I haven't even had time to make a video on this one yet. But it's a cool guitar. I'm anticipating I'll use it a lot on stage. And actually, pardon the shaky cam, but I'll show you a cool thing about it. It's got an all-access neck heel, so it's really comfy to play up in the upper registers. This is a 1974 Les Paul Custom. Uh, 20th anniversary, you can see there what's left of the inlay. This is a real player's grade guitar, kind of like the Black SG was. Um, it's at least partially refinished. I know the body's got the original finish, but the neck and headstock area have been refinished. Uh, it was had a headstock repair at one time. It's got uh, 70 Schallers on it, homemade truss rod cover, original fretless Wonder frets, which I keep swearing I'm going to change one day, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, you get your T tops in there. I put the cream parts on there because I wanted it to look like Steve Marriott's from Humble Pie. Uh, we've got a Godo. ABR1 style bridge, and then I'm assuming the original lightweight tailpiece. Witch hats. This is a really heavy guitar. It's about 11 pounds. And again, we'll see if I can show it on camera, but that's, it's an incredibly thin neck. Like it makes an Ibanez seem huge, but uh, it's a great guitar. And I love to play, you know, rock and roll stuff on this. This is a 2019 original collection Gibson Les Paul TV special. I got this after buying the red SG. This is really what I had been looking for. The SG just happened to come along first. It's all stock, haven't done a thing to it. It's got the rounder 50s neck on it. Nice weight, it's, I've seen some that are lighter, but this one is, you know, a little over seven and a half pounds. Cool axe. Um, Hasn't seen as much stage time as the SG has, interestingly, although I do prefer the neck profile on this. It's more the rounded 50s. And then we've got the Les Paul I've had the longest. This is a 2010 57 reissue from the custom shop. Gold top. It originally came out of Mark's Guitar Loft in the US, and the neck profile is way more of a late 59, early 60, kind of rounded, but still kind of slim neck. It's not anywhere close to the sort of baseball bat that you'd expect if you bought one of these. It's a really light guitar for being uh, unchambered too. It's um, a little over eight pounds. I've got some custom Sanford Magnetics pickups in there and a Faber bridge and tailpiece. This for a long time was my only Les Paul, so I've modified it with bits and pieces over the years just to suit what I wanted. But it's a fantastic guitar and uh, I'll try to capture, might not be very easy to do it. You can see it's got lots of honest play wear, but if you catch it in the right light, you can actually see some figure under the gold paint. I don't think the lighting in here will show it. But anyway, that's the, uh, let's look at the Les Pauls. Cheers.